Today we're doing lesson 3.1, multiply by 10. The que essential question says, what strategies can you use to multiply by 10? We're gonna learn a few different strategies, um, but the main one, the one that I think most of you will like the best is like this. We have 24, times 30. 30 is a group of tens, right? Okay. What you will do to solve this, eyes up here please, is, multi is take your basic fact. Basic facts are the numbers in a problem without the what? Hmm? Zero. Zeros. So do you see any zeros there? No, so 24 is one number of our basic fact times 3. Now you guys like the math warm-up, or you know how to do 24 times 3 by regrouping. 3 times 4 is 12. 12. Put down the 2, carry the 1. 3 times 2 is 6 plus 1, 72. So 24 times 3 is 72, and then you bring over the zero. That's all you gotta do, okay? Basic fact, and bring over the zero or zeros, okay? All right, so what word do we use for one zero? Riley? Tens. Tens, good. So we're gonna do that too. All right, so it says animation for a computer-drawn cartoon requires about 20 frames per second. How many frames would need to be drawn for a 30-second cartoon? So back in the olden days, before computers were around, they had to hand draw everything. And if you wanted to, so say I, I was making um, making a cartoon character who was waving, okay? You would have to first make a drawing of the cartoon character like this, 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 like this. 20 of those for 30 seconds. For a 30 second wave, it would be 20 for each second. Okay, so the phrase 20 frames per second means 20 frames are needed for each second of animation. How does this help you know what operation to use? When you hear the word per, I'm gonna circle it here. When you hear the word per, it tells you you're gonna be multiplying. So per means multiply. Um, so if you're talking about um, <clears throat> let's say um, that we've got four students and each one has three books, okay? So three books per student. Three books per student. So to figure out how many books are in there, we do four times three, right? Four students times three books each worth three books per student. So per means multiply. Okay, here we go. Use place value. To multiply 30 by 20, you can think of 20 as two tens. And this would be where we replace a zero with the word tens. Okay? So. 30 stays the same, 20 becomes how many tens? Two tens. What is 30 times 
times 2. 60. Or 30 plus 30 is 60. And then we have 60 tens. Then we can replace that word tens back with a zero. So 60 tens or 600. Okay. So this is the problem they are having us do, guys. 30 times 20. The way I like to do it best is with the basic fact. What's the basic fact? Three times two. What is three times two? Six. Six. How many zeros do we need to add on? Two. Two. Easy peasy, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Another way, so one way is to use place value. Another way is to use the associative property. They split 20 into 2 times 10. Does 2 times 10 equal 20, Briley? Yeah. Yep. And then we can bring down the 30 and the time sign. And then group this together. 30 times 2 is 60. And 60 times 10 is 6. 6 times 1 6. With how many zeros? Zero. So that's 2 100. zeros. 600. All right, here we go. So we made this 60 times 10, 600. So 600 frames would need to be drawn for 30 seconds. 600 drawings for 30 seconds. Pretty crazy. Um, it says compare the number of zeros in each factor to the number of zeros in the product. So let's do that. Here's the number of zeros. Here, I'm going to scoot this over a little bit. So in the problem, in the factors, how many zeros do you see? Two. Two. In the answer, how many zeros do you see? Two. Two. So the number of zeros in the factors and the product is normally equal. I've told you guys before, there is one situation, Annie, when the number of zeros is not the same in the factors and the product. Does anybody remember what I said? Kaden, are you focused? Make good decisions, please. Put your pencil up here. Armor, what is the one situation where the number of zeros in the answer won't match up with the number in the problem? If the answer that you get has a zero in it. Exactly. If the answer to the basic fact has a zero in it. Okay? All right. So, this is what I'm talking about. Let's make this, let's make this a five and a two. What does 5 times 2 equal? 10. Ten. Ten. And then how many zeros do we still need to bring over? Two. Two. So how many zeros do we have in our product? Three. Three. How many in the problem? Two. Two. So that is the only time when they won't match up, Wade, is whenever you've got more, your, the answer to your basic fact um, is, has a zero in it. Okay, compare the number of zeros in each factor to the number of zeros in the product. What do you notice? Both have two zeros. That's it. That's all we have to write down. Both have two zeros, the factors and the product. Okay, after you've finished that, turn to page 146. We can also use a number line. So on this one, what they're having us do is multiplying 15 times 20. <clears throat> so we start with by dropping off that zero and making a number line for 15 times two. So do you see what they're counting by on the number?
number line? Yes. What are they counting by? Two. Two. Okay. They're counting by twos. Let's make 15 jumps. So we'll start at zero and we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And where do we end up for fifteen times two? Thirty at thirty. Now if we go back to the problem, what's the difference in 20 and 2? You got a 0 and 20, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's worth 10 times as much. So the second number line they have us do, the only difference is all of the digits have a 0 behind it. 2, 20, 4, 40, all the way down. So now we're still going to jump 15 times but each jump is going to be worth 20. Okay? So now we're going to jump 15 times again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 jumps. And where do we end up? 300. We got 300. It's still the same. Yep. Differently. Yeah. There's just another zero. Exactly. So the only difference, as Aiden was saying, between this problem and this problem is an extra zero. The only difference between this product and this product is There's an, an extra, extra zero. zero. Okay. So we can also do jumps. Notice that we jumped the number of times. Of our prop of one of our factors so our first factor was 15 so we jumped 15 times yep and each time we jumped um, on the actual problem we jumped 20 steps right yeah okay Aiden I noticed that every time you add a zero to <clears throat> like one number or and then the, and you figure out the answer if you add another zero with the number, like if I get 15 times 200, that'll be 3,000. Yes! Nice job. Aiden discovered the pattern. That's exactly right. So we started, nice job, Aiden. I think that's worth a dice, a dice roll here in a few minutes. So 15 times 2 was 30. 15 times 20 was 300. And what Aiden said was 15 times 200 then would be 3,000. Good job, Aiden. Nice work. Okay, so that's what I'm talking about. That's called transferring the knowledge, taking it a step further, seeing the pattern. Okay. Nice job. Okay, so on this one, you guys remember mental math? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mental math was a little bit of a challenge, but yeah. on this one, we're going to use the halving and doubling strategy. Ooh. So we're going to take 14 and cut it in half. What is half of 14? Seven. 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 So 14 divided by 2 is 7, and the rest of the problem is times 30. So 7 times 30, what's our basic fact? 7 times 3. Which equals? 21. 21, and then we bring over? The zero. 210. 210. Now, <clears throat> 210 is the answer to 7 times 30. That's half of our answer because our original problem was 14 times 30. So we cut 14 and, and half. So that means we need to double our answer, okay? And then those end up canceling each other out. If you divide here, <coughs> you divide by two here, and then multiply by two here, um, then you'll end up, they cancel each other out. It's kind of like taking two steps forward and then two steps back, okay? I ended up right where I started, right? Mm -hmm. So 21 times two is it what? 420. Yep, 21 times 2 is 42 because what's 2 times 2? Four. 4. And 1 times 2? Two? 2. And then bring down your 0. zero. So the answer to this problem is 420. <clears throat> okay, so 14.
14 divided by 2 is 7. 7 times 30 is 210. 210 times 2 is 420. <coughs> All right. <coughs> this wants us to use mental math as well. Um, so we're going to cut 12 in half. What's half of 12? Six. 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 So we did 12 divided by 2. That equals 6. And then we do 6 times 40, which equals... What's 6 times 4? 24. 24 with our 0 behind it. And that gives us half of our answer, right? Yes. Because our problem was 12 times 40. We have the answer to 6 times 40, so we have to double our answer. 2 times 240? 480. 80. Yes, 480. Because what's 2 times 2? 4. 4. And 2 times 4? 8. eight. Then add the zero. zero. And then add the 0. So that's how we use it with mental math. Using place value, we turn that 0 into the word 10. ten. ten. 12 times 4, 10. Okay, so we know 12 times 4 is 48. And then we bring down the word 10. 48 tens is the same as 480. 480. All right, last one. Find 20, or last one on this page. 20 times 27. See which, tell which method you use to explain what happens in each step. So 20 times 27. This is what I want, or what I think you guys will have, be able to do the, the easiest. What is the basic fact for this problem? Two times two. Two times 27. Two times 27. Remember, we use all the digits except the zero. Okay? So 27 times 2. We're going to stack that up like our math warm up. What is 2 times 7? 14. Put the 1 up, put the 4 down. What's 2 times 2? Two? 4. 4. Plus 1 more. 5. Five. Five. So 27 times 2 is? 54, and then we bring over the zero. The zero. zero. So 540. 540. Okay. <clears throat> so here's what I'm going to write. Multiply the basic fact. equals 54, then add the zero. So that is essentially what we are doing today. Okay, so we have four more problems that we're going to do, and then I'm going to um, have you guys do some to show me if you can do it. And so if, um, once you finish copying, if you'll turn to 147, Linda, what's problem three say? 20 times 20. 20 times 20? What's problem four say? 40, 40 times 24. 24. And problem five? 11 times 60. Okay. All right, so here's what we're going to do. Starting with this, what is our basic fact? 1 times 12. 1 times 12. One times 12. Times 12. Good, Landon. 1 times anything is the 12. other number. So 1 times 12? 12. 12. 12. 12. 12. 
and then we bring down the zero. zero. Ouch. 100. What's your basic fact on this one? Two times two. Two times two, two, times two. two, times two uh, equals four. Times how many zeros? Two. 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 Basic fact. Four, four times, times two. Four. Okay. Now that one is not one I can do in my head, yeah. so I'm going to stack it up and use regrouping. 24 times 4. So 4 times 4. 16. 16. 16. Put the 1 up top, put the 6 down here. 4 times 2. 8. eight. Plus 1. Nine. 9. So 4 times 24 equals 96. Nine. And then we bring down the 0. zero. Okay, so 960. Last one, what's our basic fact? One, 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 two, one, two, one, six. What's that equal? Six. six. And then how many zeros? One. one. Boom. See how fast that goes? Yeah. Yeah. That was like easy. Yeah, that was really okay. easy. The biggest problem that students had today was remembering to add or bring down or add on the zeros. And that was the biggest problem of the day. I, that is not an easy list though. And and you would you would think, but what they're doing, Eden, is they're like on this problem, they're getting caught up on this. So they're like figuring that out and they're doing all that. And then they're used to being done after they finish that, so they're forgetting to add that zero. So each time, um, go back and see, did I add another enough zeros? And a lot of times we just bring down how many zeros? One, but sometimes it's two. So don't forget to bring down enough zeros. I think on today's assignment, it's only going to be one or two, but there will be times when it's three, you're right. So um, the first thing I'm going to have you guys do is choose three from the, um, for, out of six, seven, eight, and nine, I want you to pick three of those problems, circle them and complete them and then raise your hand and I will come and check them. And then the actual assignment is page 149 on the back, and you do not have to do number seven. When you finish, you turn in the basket, mark the checklist.